Hi, my name is Chris Burris. I'm one of the owners of SES Research. And I just wanted to share with you some of the exciting research that we're doing on C60, and really we like to call it ESS60. Uh, and just for clarification, it's important to know we've got C60 research going on and C60 is for industrial applications and there's peer reviewed published research that shows when it's improperly processed, it's actually harmful. ESS60 is C60 that's been processed for safer human consumption. For the rest of this video, we'll be referring to ESS60 as a product that's been processed for safer human consumption. So the first study that I want to talk about is an Aura Ring study. We've actually had this underway for quite some time. Uh, I've been in contact with the University of California, San Diego professor by the name of Benjamin, uh, and he actually is a consultant for Aura Ring. Now, Aura Ring is one of the most accurate sleep trackers on the market. And of course, they've got a lot of great sleep data. Uh, interestingly, our product, one of our most consistent testimonials about our product is our customers take it in the morning, they report mental focus and energy during the day, and then better sleep that night. So unlike a lot of supplement companies out there, we wanted to put our money where our mouth is and say, hey, if this is what our customers are saying, let's actually go out and get some scientific data that supports that. Now. Uh, we've run into a little bit of a hiccup uh, because it turns out that the Aura Ring is pretty good at identifying COVID early for those people who had the ring prior to kind of being exposed. If you have a good baseline, uh, it notices the temperature difference even in asymptomatic cases. So it's a, a pretty phenomenal thing. What that does mean is that Benjamin has been pulled off uh, and is doing a lot of press, dealing with the press analyzing data and really it's kind of slowed down the process for our sleep study. What we have done though is continue to run people through a sleep study and what we ask them to do in the sleep study is give us 10 days of data and it's really survey data and I'll talk about that here in a second uh, before they start the product then continue that survey while they get on the product for 10 days back off the product for 10 days and then back on the product for 10 more days and kind of look at how their interpretation, their understanding of their sleep experiences have changed while they've been on and off SES Research's product. One of the things we've actually already had five participants go through this. We've got two amazing videos. I think one of the best kind of takeaways is those people who have gone through the process uh, and through the sleep study uh, are saying that they'll be customers for life. So uh, that's pretty exciting. We're going to talk about this graph here. In this graph, we've got uh, in the blue is the first interpretation of information, right? Interpretation of these four criteria. One is how was your sleep the night before? Two, how quickly did you fall asleep the night before? Three, how restless were you during that sleep? And then the fourth item is how did you feel after the sleep? The blue column uh, is actually the first 10 days off the product. So before they've ever tried uh, ESS 60 at all, uh, the red is once they're on the product that it's an average of the data we collected from them uh, for them being on the product for those 10 days. Yellow is off of the product for 10 days and then green is back on the product for 10 days. One of the things to note that's really important in this and just kind of a quick summary is blue is kind of the baseline of where they were before taking the product. And then green is where they were uh, taking it after the break, but the second 10 days. In each and every case, and this is actually true of the other data that we're looking at, the green columns are higher, the green data. So the perception of how they slept the night before is better than when they started. The perception of how quickly they fell asleep is better than when they started. Uh, how restless they were is about the same and then how quickly, how well they felt about their sleep the next day is better. So consistently we're seeing that people, uh, and the data is actually supporting what people are telling us, what our most consistent testimonial is. Again, people take it in the morning, they report mental focus and energy during the day, and then better sleep that night. So this is pretty exciting. I had a, a doctor give me a call uh, really, it was kind of latter part of 2019 and kind of share with me that they were planning on doing this kind of study. They were going to look at DNA age uh, and then they were going to come back and revisit DNA age after he had run some patients through a particular protocol. And we'll talk about that protocol here in a second. He called me actually 
uh, it was probably around July, and he said, listen, I had uh, two people go through the study, so it's a really small study, obviously. Uh, they used the DNA age test, so that's actually the brand of the age test, and they got a, a, a baseline for the nurse practitioners that went through this, so there were two nurse practitioners. Uh, they took the baseline in January of 2020, and then the next test was actually in June of 2020. So you're looking at six months apart. Uh, I did a little bit of research to just kind of understand what do people expect from a DNA age test and from really from a DNA age study. And it turns out the typical expectation is if you take one test for your baseline and then six months later, you take another test. The hope is, is that the, that the test will show that you only aged five months in those six months, right? So you're slowing down that aging process. The results that we got in this particular study were pretty amazing. But before I, before I get to those results, I want to talk about what was actually what was the protocol. So this is really kind of based off of the Dr. David Sinclair protocol. So the uh, pr participants were given uh, 50 milligrams of metformin. They were given three tabs uh, tablets of resveratrol. Uh, and then they were given the SES C60, they were given five mils uh, each evening. So we are gonna make a couple of adjustments uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. The results from those first two participants were, were so much better than just, hey, hopefully I'm only aging five months in a six month period. What actually happened is one of their participants, uh, their second DNA age test showed that they were 1.8 years younger than the first DNA age test. So that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, the next was, uh, the second participant was 2.7 years younger than the original DNA test. So this was pretty exciting. The, the doctor, he's out of Tampa. He called me and said, hey, hey, we really need to do some more studies on this. We're probably gonna change the DNA age test. Uh, and, and then we put together a protocol and I'll share that with you in just a second. So the new protocol is, it's pretty exciting. We've actually got four people going through the process. Um, their first result, their first test, uh, actually their final results after three months are gonna be uh, given to us on January 19th. Basically, we've got four women. They're from age, or their DNA age is from 38 to 48. Their actual age is from 42 to 52. Uh, we're switching to the DNA age test called True Age. That's by True Diagnostic. We're removing the resveratrol and we're only focusing on uh, the SES C60. They'll be given five mils. Uh, which is one teaspoon, uh, they'll take that in the morning and they're gonna do that for three months. Like I said, they've already taken the baseline. Uh, the next result uh, we're gonna get on, on around January 19th. I think actually that's when they're gonna pull test results. So shortly thereafter, we'll have those. We're really excited about those. And the plans are as those results come in and they look good, we'll be expanding that to you know much larger than a two or four person study. We're really excited about that. And finally, I just want to share with you, you know, in 2012, uh, Dr. Bhatti, uh, Dr. Musa, they actually published the results of their toxicity study. That's the study that proved our product when given to Wistar rats, extended the lives of those Wistar rats by 90% and those Wistar rats died without tumors. So that's pretty exciting. The typical scientific process is you get a result, you get a, actually, first you have a hypothesis. And in this case, the hypothesis was actually that, that the ESS, well, C60 was gonna be uh, toxic. Uh, and then you get a result, right? In this case, the result was that, well, it turns out they processed it properly. So it's ESS60, it's not toxic. It actually extended the lives of those rats by 90% and they died without tumors. The next step in the scientific process is for another lab to recreate those results so that you have some good understanding really like that that initial result is put forth as uh, hey here's the result and then you got to get other lab groups and other organizations to do this study uh, no one's done that since 2012 uh, so we're really talking about eight years of nobody jumping into this actually almost nine years now um, and so we're in the process of pulling the trigger to do that. Uh, the first study, we're kind of taking a step back with this new company that we're working with that's gonna manage the rat study for us. They wanted us to go through the OECD 407 14 day repeated oral toxicity study. Uh, it's actually an $11,000 study and it's just one of many things that we need to do to get in line so that we can actually get that full on uh, rat study started. 
Uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, that really should be done uh, in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, and, and we're looking forward to sharing the results with you uh, on that study.